What do you want for dessert? Hmm, what would be good? Ice cream cone. You want an ice cream cone? Yeah. Well, we just got done with this tail cone back here. It's kind of like the same thing. We put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to get this uh, built. Is that good enough? I mean, tail cone's great. But how about that ice cream? All right, let's go get some ice cream and let's come back and talk about what it took to build this tail cone. Deal. It took us a little over two months calendar time, but we got a completed tail cone behind us. Yeah. Where's the rest of it? Where's the rest of it? Well, it's kind of scattered through the house. <laughs> I mean, we started the tail kit right before we left for Oshkosh. Yep. Started the vertical stabilizer, knocked that out in almost one day. You can see the other video that I'll link here to that, but... Um, about 10 hours, eight, eight to 10 hours of build, we got the vertical stabilizer and we're like, we got this tail kit. We're gonna be done in no time. Then came the rudder, then the, uh, whoa, ho horizontal stabilizer was next, which wasn't too, too bad. You know, I mean, we started realizing that Vans is amping up the game and making it a little bit harder. <sighs> and then comes the rudder. Oh. The rudder was a pain in the butt. So we get the rudder done. Then the elevator, it felt like that took forever. That was just because there were two pieces. Two pieces, trying to do them both at the same time, put it all together, take it all apart, put it all together, take it all apart, deeper, deeper. You know, so we're going back and forth. So we get that done. And our friend Rick tells us, oh, the tail cone goes together quick. You lie, you <laughs> lied. Well, it, it kind of did. Um, it was a kind of a fun process of building the skeleton up first. Yeah, and getting all the pieces put together. All the guts the and insides. all the insides. Uh, then you take it apart. Well, then you put it together and, um, and- Then you partially put it together. Yeah. And then you have some fun with all the wiring. Yes, then comes the wires. Um, first time you get to play with wiring, um, Wish I could say the van's instructions were perfect, but um, trying to figure out exactly where they wanted the wires to run through under that J channel, it makes sense now. Yes, but you also had the struggle with, hmm, what kind of connectors are we gonna use? And then we played with Molexes and, oh my oh, goodness. Don't, don't get me started on crimping Molexes. Um, vans? Send us that Molex plug. You put Molex plugs on everything else. <clears throat> and then on the uh, elevator trim, it's bare wire. And the Molex plug is not included in the pins. Um, so it took us several, I mean, kind of cheaped out and ended up finding it on um, Amazon. Uh, got the kit, got it all wired up wouldn't plug in, realized my definition of male and female was different than uh, Molex's definition of male and female. So cut those pins off, put the right pins on, and uh, we've all the testing we can do, we think that the trim's gonna work. But we will find out before we fly, and if we gotta recrimp it, we recrimp it. I wish I could have had footage of when you were doing that because you were just getting so frustrated. <laughs> Crimping is a yet another skill. I mean, building a Vans aircraft is the process of turning the page and going, ah, oh, that's a skill I didn't know I needed to know. Better get to knowing it. And um, crimping wires was the latest in that. But as far as wiring goes, we got the wire harness that Vans sends, and it's a really good wire harness. And the instructions line up really well on what, what goes well and uh, how. Uh, routing it through the um, zip ties is something you got to think about a little bit. So we did cut a um, single scrap piece of cable that we ran through first just to kind of get a layout of what it's going to go through and how. Helpful hint. Buy extra zip ties. Yes. Went to Home Depot and bought 
a whole bunch of black and white zip ties. Because uh, Van sends you just enough white zip ties. Uh, I went ahead and not only did we zip tie everywhere that there's a little hole uh, in the flanges and um, bulkheads that they want you to zip tie, I went ahead and put three or four zip ties between those around just the cables themselves. And it makes you it... also had to remove several because yep. they were in the wrong place or you tightened them before they needed to be tightened. And... Zip ties are disposable and you're going to need tons. Okay, and honey. Even got zip ties temporarily holding our excess. So the wire cable, uh, which handles everything from electric trim to lights to uh, probably ELT power and who knows what else. You also get this phone cable that goes through, which I know is for the ELT. You also get to start wiring your static system that will plug into the pedo static. Um, kind of expected the static port to be a little bit more special than it was, like a special static connector that goes through no it's it's a pop rivet that you pull the center out of pretty basic pretty basic and you stick the tube on the back of it and put some sealant around it and uh, yeah. we went ahead and added an extra zip tie then sealed uh, so it's nice and tight nice and secure uh, and then the rudder cables they go through yeah and now you get to start riveting on plastic pieces um the that was kind of awkward i felt like in the plastic because i felt like it was really really tight on the plastic but. tight's better than loose the whole purpose of the plastic is the rudder cable it's where the, the rudder cable goes through the slit in the back so that it doesn't rub against the metal yeah so it's not structural it's not gonna hold the airplane together but it's gonna keep the plane flying for a long time um what else did we do back there um a couple bnc cables routing it down both sides putting the zip ties we have tightened up all the zip ties going all the way back it's just the ones in the most forward bulkhead yeah so then after you get all that done well let's let's talk about riveting the um the bottom section you know so when we put the bottom together the bottom skin mm -hmm. on i was pretty easy uh we um were we able to turn it on its side at that point we were doing it upside down we're doing it oh, remember i was right. lying underneath the saw horses yeah until you get the bottom skin riveted on Vans tells you to put it on two saw horses so you can get in between. Yeah. So um, she is the best rivet bucker that we know. <laughs> so she's down on the ground, um, setting the rivets. I'm up top. I had the easy job on that one. Okay. I had the easy job on all the riveting through this whole process. Yeah. Uh huh. It's uh, there's some challenging rivets, um, and if we get a mirror back there and really look at some of the rivets that are back there they're not our favorites um no especially in the back back section very aft section it's it, you don't get to look at it it's just you're doing it blind and not you have to work to get the pieces to seat together uh we did do one section in the very aft at the bottom we and had a gap. Had a gap, and we're looking at it, and we're like, we even send a picture into Vans and talk to our favorite uh, tech advisor, Kevin. Kevin. And at first he said, no, no, that's fine. I mean, you can go redo it if you want. It's just cosmetic. He wasn't looking at the right spot. He was looking at the one that we thought we did a good job on. <laughs> And then he emailed us back the next day going, oh, I look closer, that bottom section, that's what you're talking about. Yeah, those do need to be drilled out. So drilled out the row of rivets. Uh, Kevin gave us some great tips to um, increase our rivet drilling out skills, um, which we haven't practiced as much as I was expecting. We haven't had to drill out as many rivets as people say we probably should have had to. Yeah. I feel like we've been doing a pretty stellar job at. Yeah. And most of the rivets that we had to drill out, ooh, they were doozies. 
we can never mess up a rivet that's easy to get to. But that's also why we were a little bit nervous about drilling out all these rivets that are mm -hmm. in the skin. Yeah. So our, well, at least my stance on drilling out rivets are, it really needs to be drilled out before we do, because we're more likely to cause more damage drilling it out than we are um, <clears throat> leaving it. So. But we've gotten a lot better at it. So. Got, we've gotten a lot better at it. We've got our tips and tricks on it. It's just that one rivet that's next to a piece that you don't have clean access to drill it out. Those it's are tough. the ones that scare us. It's tough. So we drilled those out, reset it, got that gap down. And it's looking uh, really beautiful. I've re I'm really proud of how this looks. I've seen some pictures of other people's tail cones. Um, and I, I, I think uh, I'm proud of what we've done. Yeah, it looks really good. So, but then you start putting the side skins on and that's where we uh, have been using our new tables that uh, we have here, kind of secondary workbenches. They're a little lower, so it makes it easier to get in and out yeah. of. And rotating it on its side, choosing which side it's on and when it's right side up is kind of something we alternated between a lot to get all those rivets set. But uh, it's just a matter of setting a whole bunch of, uh, rivets at a time and a lot of them the further back you get the harder it is to get your hands in there and get the angle that you really want to get the buck and bar on uh, and you're dealing with skins that are curved oh i have decided that i'm going to find someone who can just take a big block of tungsten and make the exact angles that i want because I'm so sick of, oh, it doesn't fit. Oh, it doesn't fit. What do I do? Ah! I'm just, it's going to be okay. Yeah. Post in the comments, what are your favorite tungsten bars? Because we've got the standard four pack of different sizes and shapes. But what, what oddballs are out there that's a must have? Uh, we know about the uh, Cleveland Tools uh, specific one for the trail and edges. We, we yeah, use, those. use that. You know, those are great for that one specific job, but not everyday use because it's steel, not yeah. tungsten. But if there's like one odd shaped tungsten buck and bar that makes sense, let us know. Yeah, send me some pictures. Because, you know, diamonds are not her best friend. She loves tungsten. She loves her tungsten set. Um, but then, yeah, we, as, as we got it closed up more and more, uh, then you start putting the top skins on. Mm. And that was fun, especially at the last step when we're crawling inside, figuring out how to lay boards down to support our weight so we can actually be, it's the first time we're inside of our airplane. Yeah. Not in the section that we'll ever. It wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be, though. It wasn't. It was kind of just awkward to bend and get in there. Uh, especially the problem is doing it over your head. Yes. Uh, and there are a couple rivets on the bulkhead in there that you've got to set um, universal rivets. Um, and Once it's in there. Of course I'll look at it and go, I can squeeze those. No, nah, you can't squeeze them. Gotta, gotta get creative, but. You see that a lot. Oh, don't worry about it. I can, I, I can squeeze it. And then I'm like, there's no way he's gonna squeeze those rivets. And then, you know, 15 minutes after him trying to squeeze it, I'm like, would please just buck it? Yes. I, I, I'm getting better at recognizing it early, but I always neglect to think Listen. about the space that the tool, the squeezer itself takes up, and I just can't get it centered on there. Or you can just listen to me. I could, but, we, but squeezing so much better. <laughs> we always squeeze. We only buck when we can't squeeze, so at least we're going to try. Mm -hmm. So, but... We got it done. I'm proud of it. I'm really excited to see when this gets attached to the fuselage that we have sitting over there. The next uh, section. Next section, yep. Yeah. Uh, we've got a pretty lengthy section. Section ahead 29 of us. is very long, but section 30. Put them together. Get the duct tape out. We're done. Go fly. Doesn't work that way. I'll handle it. Don't worry. Okay. But um, I hear from, again, our friend Rick, who tells us that once you put these two things together, it's one of the most exciting parts of the build because, you know, it, 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 the, the, the airframe is taking shape. And if, I mean, it's 
half of an airframe taking shape. <laughs> I mean, I'm super excited. But getting the side panels on the fuselage, getting uh, all that nice and strong so it can be picked up and moved real easily. Uh, we're getting there. Our wings are showing up. March. March. Actually, I haven't checked the shipping status in a while. I think it's a January to March. Yeah. So I, I don't think if it was January, they would be asking for money right now. Is it's oh. mid December? Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's a lot closer. We should probably check in. We probably should check it because ideally, I would like to be just finished and putting these two together when our wings show up. We're gonna need a hanger. Yeah, this t space is getting tight in this garage. Where are we gonna put the wings? Can I empty out the shed out back? No. <laughs> I mean, the shed is just like a hanger. Not so much. But we'll trust us. We will solve that problem when the wings come here. We will. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, it's not like we're going to attach the wings to the fuselage while it's here, but there's going to be lots of work to do. Even though they're quick build wings, there's still things we got to do. Um, not 100% sure. Check everything. Yeah, go over, check that they did everything right. Uh, hopefully they did a good job sealing the fuel tanks because if not, that's the first thing we do. Oh, fuel tank sealant, our favorite. So... This is the status of our uh, our build so far. We've got the tail kit almost done to the, we're not gonna attach the stabilizer, uh, stabilizer as, and rudders and elevators until we get towards the end. Uh, even the instructions say, you can do this at any point in the build, great, move on. We'll come back to it later. <laughs> Started it <clears throat> late September, the tail cone, and we finished it uh, early, December. Yeah. Kind of took a break in the middle, kind of had um, some life events and some things that took us away from building for uh, several weeks at a time, but we're, we're back to it. Yeah. So thanks for joining us in 14 Victor Echo. See you next time. See you next time. <laughs>